And we are going. What's going on with everybody? It is your boy, Eric, a.k.a. Young Guy, coming to you live in the Green Dungeon, giving it to you real, real rugged. And uh, I got to mind as a while. I'm let him introduce myself, man. Who got here today? What's up? It's K-Town, Koreatown, Oddity, Little Dominique's Nosebleed. Uh, is this for real? Going to be past tense. 200 tree rings, one half of Vivian's, one half of five chuckles. Uh... I was trying to think of some more AKAs or whatever. That's it. It's a lot of AKAs, man. <laughs> a lot of AKAs. I really just cheated and just named albums and shit. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing today? Good, man. I'm chilling, man. Anything planned for today? Man, shit. Uh, I, I pretty much just uh, picked my daughter from school. So she's back. She's about to take a nap. I'll probably take a nap, too. Wake up, probably watch this snowfall, see what's cracking up this last season. Gotcha. You know, so you watch bad TV. Shout out to you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I watch. I watch all the shit, everything, all the, especially some black shit. You know what I'm saying? No, I've never seen snowfall. Um, I heard the first couple seasons were good, uh, but the only yeah. thing I've ever seen was the clip where the where the niggas like, uh, he's like bodies, bodies, her, her, you, you. Nah. No, that was yeah. That's that was from one of the the bad seasons. Cause the first two, maybe a little bit of three, is pretty good. And now that the one you saw the clip of, it's like that was like a party where somebody like put mushrooms in the wedding party, and so he's he don't know he's on drugs, so he's tripping out. <laughs> somebody, I remember, I saw somebody post a meme one time saying, "This is how Kendrick rap." <laughs> 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 That's really funny, actually. <laughs> that shit, that shit, have you rolling? That's really funny. No, I seen that and I was like, okay, I probably never watched it. Before. That nigga was going right. crazy off the machines, bro. That nigga said, you, "No, I, I, that nigga was because he got, you, you know, he got a lot of uh, bad things going on in his head that he never really faced. Like, if, you know, which maybe you'll never watch it, but if you do, just you know what? I think the first two seasons is worth your time. For like, just for references and you know whatever things like that, and just to see because you know John Singleton was more a little more hands on. Well, I think yeah. with those two seasons, yeah, that, so that, I, that, I think that's yeah. I heard was good. That's why it was good, right? Because he was yeah. a little bit more hands on. Got you, and then he died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got you, got you. Yeah, they're just trying to like you know keep it together, I guess. But this is the final season, so it's already like goofy as hell. But but we like watching shit just the clown, you know what I'm saying? What else are you watching? Uh, watching Wu Tang. Wu Tang started back, so I'm watching that. It's pretty good, you know. Like Wu Tang, you know, like when it first started, the first season, maybe the first two or three episodes, you're kind of like, uh, you know, like RZA don't sound like that, or this guy don't look like this person. But they're kind of more embodying the essence of the people. Uh, Shamik Moore, who does uh, Raekwon, he's pretty good as Raekwon. Uh. You God is pretty good, but uh, <clears throat> it's like what they do going into all these kind of like abstract things that they do, like kind of like trippy sort of things to like get across like what what they're into. You know, like this last episode I saw with like like old dirty bastard, they go into this comedy world and kind of like turn him into like blowfi and the comedy club. It was like it's pretty ill. Pretty good, like you know, they shoot it really good, you know. Gotcha, gotcha. So you're a Wu Tang, uh, Snowfall. Anything else? Uh, I feel like all my shows are not on no more. I mean, Atlanta's done. Um, um, I'll be down for Dave. That show, Dave, to come back, which is Little Dicky show. That shit's pretty good. Um, uh, what was my other shit? Uh. Better things. That was a pretty good show. They just ended their shit. So um, Dave is a yes. Good you like Dave huh? is a good show? I said Dave is a good yeah. show. Yeah, bro. It's like it's like I didn't want to think it was good either, you know, but I, I got I was like, okay, I'm gonna watch this shit. And it's really good, dude. Like, yeah, they do a good like job, I man. I feel like I can't support anything with Dicky, man. Uh, that's the same thing I said. I hated the, the advertisements for it and everything, but once I watched it. And I started watching the whole thing. It's like, this shit is funny and it's good. You know what I'm saying? Good writing. 
I was gonna mm -hmm. say I'm gonna tell you what kind of turned me off. Uh, I I was like not against Lil Dicky at all until my friend pointed out. So, like I think I was like saying something positive about Lil Dicky, and he was yeah. like he was like uh, I guess he got interviewed in the Breakfast Club. He was like, man, once he said that like he was like uh, I guess like using hip hop as like a platform to like do comedy, and like yeah. he was like using hip hop to do. I was like, oh, that is kind of yeah. interesting that like he no I get, yeah get a comedy career off. That is kind of hmm. no, it's, it's kind of like it. It's kind of like lame, but he doesn't front about it on this. The show is about him. Gotcha. And it's and it's you see like it's kind of like, OK, damn, like this is crazy. Like, I, I mean, I personally wouldn't do that. But it's when you see him story, he's telling his real story. He's embarrassing himself and really doing real shit. And. So the characters they have around are really good. You got a good cast, you know what I mean. So yeah, I'm in, I'm into. I watch all the shit, man. Like if it's like you know, some stuff is like all right, man. I can really get into it, but like I'm watching anything kind of like you know black or hip hop culture related comedy. You know, I love uh, South Side. That's a pretty funny show. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. What else am I? What else am I watching? Can I give you a recommendation that sounds like it'll be up your lane? Yeah, yeah, please. Flatbush Misdemeanors. Have you heard of this? I have heard of it. I haven't watched it yet. It's almost as the best I can say. It, it's like a, a New York Atlanta. Okay, bet. I'm into Basically. that. So yeah, I, and it sounds like you would probably like that. So your yeah, Flatbush Misdemeanors, very yeah. hilarious show. Very very funny show. Definitely will watch it. I, I'm happy to have a new good thing to get into. I'm glad I haven't watched it yet because now I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Hey, you know what's funny? That's kind of how I felt when I did, uh, when I discovered your music. I was like, okay, oh, I got a new thing that I've never heard of that I can get into. And Word, nah. That happened when uh, the Little Nosebleeds albums uh, came out. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. What year was that? 2021, was it? That was 2020. 2020? So 2020, mm -hmm. uh, I had multiple people like, hey, I think you'll like this. I think you'll like this. So I was like, okay, let me check it out. And yeah. I like it. I was like this. I was like, I don't know why this nigga nose is bleeding on the cover, but I'm going to listen to right. it. And, uh, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I think what got me hooked is um, is the song with Sudan Archives. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that song, I don't know why that, that beat is very funky. I love mm -hmm. it. And then the way little right, right. The right, way right, right, right. Fire. The way you approach that beat, I think, was really cool. And that beat, like, because the beat sound like a, I don't know, it sounds like you in a goddamn, uh, I don't know what that sound like. It's like you like in a jazz club, maybe like during the Harlem Renaissance era. They got like a right. top hat on or some shit. Nigga. Right. You know, it's got a very vibey right. feel to me. I love that beat. Yeah. I think nah, that's so okay. I like this a lot. And yeah, I just listened to the entire album. And ever since then, listened to the uh, previous discography. We're talking about is this for real coming up soon. Mm -hmm. But just want to say, uh, hey, you're a talented guy, man. Talented brother. No, thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. For sure. Uh, would you say uh, that album is kind of the album that put you on a lot of people's radar? Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. Because, um, and I mean, it's crazy. You know, obviously, when in, in making it, uh, you know, I knew what I was making, you know? Um, and I definitely like thought that people might get into it, but I definitely didn't e expect it to be like, it's still like people still hit me about it. Like people ain't give a fuck about my new shit. <laughs> like, you know, like, like, you know, unless you're like already, already, uh, grandfathered into the shit that I do, you know what I'm saying? It's like you're looking at that that one like that's people are, people are saying like this is the album I you know get people into it with you know obviously I had whoever listened to what I was doing before and then when they heard that I was like oh okay and obviously and the next album is is like totally different you know all my albums are different so I think if you got into that and it was their first time hearing me and I, I think when they heard the other thing, they're like, this ain't that, you know? But definitely that's the one that like 
so many people have like hit me up about and it's kind of like got you know reviewed well and all that kind of thing yeah so it's funny you say that because i was gonna bring those up later but i might as well bring it up now is that like yeah you do have different sounds on every album and it was interesting to me because i wanted to ask you so that's the one that blew up that's the one that had you on everybody's radar did you mm-hmm. is there like a because i feel like you have like to be like an artist you got to be an artist and kind of got to be a businessman did the art like the businessman in you did it ever say like damn I want to like I, I may have to like kind of make a part two of this because this is what people like. Or did the artist kind of always overshadow that? Like, I don't want to remake the same thing. I want to be creative. I don't even think that I could make the same thing. You know what I'm saying? It's just like there's too many elements that made that what it is. I yeah. I could concentrate on saying that's what I'm trying to do, but the same type of people may not be available to be involved. You know, I may not, you know, have an ear for the same type of beats I'm trying to use and where my headspace is at too. Cause that album was recorded from, um, t- uh, end of 2017 to 2019 into 2019. And, and then it came out during the pandemic it came out, uh, Juneteenth. And it was, I think that is also a factor in it being successful or being more like on people's radar because, okay, there was the the George Floyd thing. Everybody was in the house. So it's a 57 minute album. So it, I feel like I had people's attention more. They like, I'm, I'm bored, I'm in the house. Now I can actually like listen to something attentively you know, as opposed to if everybody was outside, it was summertime. If everybody was outside, I don't know if it would have been the same. Who knows? You know, I, I still think people thought it was good, but, you know. And so, and just more people was outside. You know, they feel more comfortable coming to the studio. I, You know, like, I even felt more comfortable reaching out to people. Um, with the Is This For Real one, one, I knew the next thing I was going to do was going to be shorter. Yeah. It's a it's like half the time that album. And it's the first thing um made after we've been in a pandemic. I recorded that in 2021. So it was like there was no way I could capture that energy again. People always want the thing that, you know what I'm saying? Like people are like, yo, Nas, do Illmatic again. Like get the same producers in the same. It's like, okay, bro, like. I hear you, but you know, we're not doing that. It's funny, but you did like a Kendrick, like with, I would say like, let's say that's your, uh, the, the nosebleeds. That's the good kid, Matt city, but that's a pretty Work. accessible album. I feel like, I feel like good kid, Matt city, yeah. is a very accessible album. Your average yeah. hip hop fan can hear that and just notice the greatness. Same thing with this. It's a very yeah. accessible album where you hear that and you can notice it's really great. So yeah, Pippa no, it worked. So Pippa butterfly. That threw a lot of people off because it was like, this isn't Good Kid Mad City or Section 80 or nothing. This is yeah. this, this nigga rapping over goddamn Miles uh, uh, Davis beats. Like, what the fuck is going on? Like, this right. nigga right. got right. like, what, like, you know, it was very out yeah. there. So, yeah, I, yeah. Like, this, is this for real? You kind of did that, where it was like, not only was it different, it was very different from, like you said, if somebody found that, it was like, oh, I, I, I like this guy. They might not like is this for real because you're giving them something completely different. Right, right. It's it's interesting too that you say that because uh my boy Taz Arnold uh produced on To Paper Butterfly and he also did a joint on Is This For Real. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of like a interesting thing I just thought about. But you know, as you know, as the artist, you know, I I, I'm an artist first. Business is what you learn about when people start scamming you. <laughs> you know, you don't even really care about business. You just be like, yo, I'm going to do the show. Can I get money? Can I sell the record and get money? Okay, cool. Oh, I get royalties? Oh, niggas be asking you on your master? Like, nigga, I don't <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, we learn business after, like, a bunch of bad mistakes happen, you know, Um so the art is like kind of like always there. And, you know, I would honestly, it's crazy. I would think like with all the music out there, 
and streaming, having access to listening to all types of music that people wouldn't think things throw them off anymore. You know, I think they would just like listen to music and be like, yeah, it's different or I don't expect this, but like, hey, it, okay, cool. Let me just try to understand it. But they don't. Pe things are still weird to people. It's For weird sure. to me. No, I, uh, I'm not gonna lie. I get thrown off by a lot of stuff. But if I really like the artist, I will give them time to like see if it clicks with me. For example, when uh, Earl Sweatshirt dropped some, uh, four or some rap songs, excuse me, I was mm -hmm. like, I was like, this is very different from anything. I was honestly, I was like, this shit sucks. <laughs> That's the first thing yeah. I thought. Like, this right, nigga, right. I was like, this nigga's rapping off beat. I was like, this is weird, it's short, and literally like maybe a week later, that was my favorite rap album of that year by far. Like leaps and bounds, that was my favorite rap album of that year because I stuck with yeah. it. Yeah, like you said, I don't, I don't really blame people because we do live in this fast food society where people are on to the next thing the next day. So it's like, if you don't like yeah. something, why am I finna get us a chance? They on to the yeah. next People don't really right. have patience, you know? Yeah, yeah. And you, it's like, I, I think about that often. I'm like, damn, do we even like, do we like stuff? Or are we just like uh, addicted to new shit? You know what I mean? Like, cause you know, I, I mean, I feel like I guess as a, an artist or being somebody who's into in different types of art, music and film and blah, 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 that when I hear something, I I know it's, if it's good or not. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, maybe it's, I, you know, everything's subjective, obviously, you know, but sometimes you go like, ah, this shit, this, this shit that people thought was fire, this is all right. You know what I'm saying? And then you might start, being like, damn, they loving this shit, but them niggas ignoring my shit. <laughs> you like, you like, my shit is iller than this. Like, they not even breaking no ground. They doing the same shit that everybody's doing. So, I, it's you. I, I guess you you just gotta you gotta just keep doing what you're doing. And be patient as an artist because sometimes you just even when you think it's simple. I think to me, I feel like. Is this for real? Is more accessible mm -hmm. than Little Dominique's nosebleed. It's way more easy to me. But somebody told me, "Yo, that shit's crazy experimental," and I was like, "Word!" I was like, "I mean, I I get it. I hear you." I was like, maybe because it's like not as direct. Like, there's not like this is the story, and it's here it is, you know. But I, I you know, that being ahead of your time stuff and you know, it's so annoying because, you know, you, you want, yeah, as an artist, you want everybody to get it, like, right now. Maybe a couple of months, but you don't want to be waiting, like, 10 years, like, yo, it's like, all right, man, I don't, I'm, I'm mad at y'all now. <laughs> no, I mean, as somebody who's a fan of uh, Is This For Real, I will tell you that shit is not accessible, or as accessible as the previous one. <laughs> it's not, it's, I'm telling you, that shit is not as accessible. <laughs> I know you believe that. That shit is not as <laughs> Because I think that it, it cause that album is like, the, the, the previous album is a much more traditional album. It just, I think that's, like, it is the, the Get Kid Matt City of your catalog. It is a very accessible album. And then you drop your To Pimp a Butterfly, where, like you said, Taz Arnold uh, produced on both of those. I don't think that's a coincidence because, uh, you know, I just, I, I right. think that I could see people hearing that and not, um, and not and it's not really clicking with people, and it has to be frustrating as an artist for somebody to come up to you, you know what I'm saying, like bringing up niggas that you know you better than, and they, you know what I'm saying, you like, right, oh, you heard the new this, this nigga going hard, you probably hit him, you know, right. like, oh, oh, right. word, you know what I'm saying, you hit him right, right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it, it is funny, it's like, it's like, you know, you know, you think like, you know, you be like, damn, like musically, what the, the other people are doing. Is like it's cool. It's like, but I thought that was kind of. I'd be thinking like, isn't that the point of what we're doing? Is trying to make sure you're progressing something, uh, opening new spaces in it. And people always, you know, you always see people on Twitter talking about, you know, how bad something is, or and how you know there's no good artists and things like that. And then I just be like looking at it like. Oh, word. Okay. So <laughs> I'm like, 
first of all, I listen to a lot of dope things. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, there's terrible things, too. And that's for ev- everything in life. It's like, but uh, it's it's like they don't people don't really want that. I was like, I never heard nobody make a song about misophonia in my entire life. Yeah. I was like, and but I, it's like in my mind, I was like, that ain't really nobody cares though, <laughs> unless you into that, you know. And and it's like people always say, it's like, man, you can't, you know. I basically, you know, have to accept having jet lag. You know what I mean? It's just like, yo, you got jet lag, bro. And that's just what it is. You, and maybe it's the, and I, I got to like not worry about that part because that obviously what I make n- never is going to change anyway. Yeah. You know, when I sit down to go like, OK, we doing the next thing. I'm never going to be like, all right, maybe I should make something for them. Like, that, you know, it's like. It doesn't matter at the end of the day because when I'm a fucking a skeleton, like nobody's gonna care about what time it came out and who liked it. Because you know when you listen to something from 1960 on your own, you're not thinking about the niggas in 1960 that didn't like it. You know what I mean? You just like, oh, I like it now. Cool. Yeah, you know? Yeah. It's like, uh, so I, I'm a big battle rap fan. And mm-hmm. there's a battle rapper named uh, Jack Boy Maine. Jack Boy Maine, like at the start of his career, he had a lot of like just very specific bars that a lot of people would like. The nigga would be referencing like a movie that came out in like 1972 that like 30 niggas seen. And right. niggas would like, he'll say the bar like, not be the punchline, like, dude, dude like, like, dude, like in this movie. And niggas would be like, right. We've never seen that movie. So right. he, had to, he had to figure out the, Okay, how do I not like just lose myself and just start rapping like everybody, but also make it more like adaptable for a wider range of people to like? So that's why I feel like something like you said, like misophonia. I had to look up what that. I didn't know what that meant. You know what I'm saying? I, I heard the song. I was like, okay, this sounds like a damn uh, a modern. It's like a modern LL Cool J song. Like that's what it sounded like. Right, like, right, right. I can just imagine like uh, I'm gonna say R. Kelly, not R. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's just crazy. <laughs> I, don't love, I don't think that's the type of love he was interested in. But uh, uh, I can see LL Cool J fucking Kango hat, shirt off, just me so phony in love. That's, I don't know why right, it pops up. Right. Like, oh. No, and, uh, right. No, it's totally right. Yeah. So when I hear that, it's like, yeah, that is something that is less accessible because. I'm positive that a lot of people that heard that song didn't know what that meant. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. No, that and it's like I, that's part of even why I had the piece at the end. You know, so you like it, it's over, and then you hear that part, and you go like, oh, "Okay, that's what it is." All right, now I got to listen again. The first yeah. time when you don't know what it is, and you and then you find out what it is, and you listen again, then you're like, "Oh shit." Okay, now that I'm not a lick. The lyrics aren't just random, you know. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Like, if a nigga got got, got to look up some shit, it's not accessible, <laughs> you know. I, I, I give you a perfect bar, but I'm a fan of that. I'm a fan of having to do some research on something I don't like. I like like oh, yeah. I gotta learn something. Like for example, I'll uh, what that nigga say? That nigga said uh, one of my favorite battle rappers, nigga named New Jersey Twerk. He said mm-hmm. something like uh, he said something like uh. I, I up this big bird and I almost tear. He said, I, I up the big bird and I, and I, and I about pterodactyl or something like that. He said, he said, I'm yeah. the big bird side and I pterodactyl. And niggas was like, that doesn't make sense. Like, yeah, pterodactyl is a big bird, but that doesn't, like, what's right. the other bar? How, how do you pterodactyl? He was like, yeah. what, what the word dactyl mean? And dactyl is like a little bone right here in your finger. So he was wow. saying, he got this shit so hard, he almost, he a pterodactyl. And I was like, why? Wow. Never known what that meant. That's a crazy. No, nah, that. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, that's that's crazy. No, nah, de- that's definitely one of those right there. Yeah, I like that type of stuff. So like finding out new stuff with, like listening to like for example the nigga behind you right there on the pan. Yep. Oh yeah, you already know. It took me three years to get. I thought MF Doom was so bad when I first heard him. I was like, I did not get it. But everybody I respected held him to such higher standards. I was like. I gotta be missing something. So I bro, I listened to Matt Villainy 
like 30 times before I liked it. I was like, I don't get this. This is so just far. Yeah. And when it clicked, it clicked. So that's what I'm saying. I get why people don't do what I'm doing because I love music. I have the patience to understand something. Bro, these these niggas not finna sit there and just be like, nah, so we're. I, I get that. You know what I'm saying? But to say all of that, don't lose what you got. Like, nigga, if you got them weird ideas, nigga, do it because somebody gonna like it. Somebody. Out there oh no, like no, yeah, no. It's like they have to. They have to be done anyway. Yeah. It's just you know, it's you just be like, damn, I, I guess I'm that artist. You know what I'm saying? Like when you you looking at other things, you know, of course, obviously you see what's going on. You're like, you're like, damn, like I always, I always call myself. I tell people like, I was like, man, I'm like a, I'm an outcast of outcast because there, there are weirder artists that people actually like pay attention to though. And they like, the, the people are picking up the, the, the articles on them and, you know, the fader and the pitchforks and all the people the cosign uh, blogs that people care about talk about them, and I'm like, these niggas is weirder than me. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you know what I mean? I'm like, these niggas is weird. I'm like, I'm not even that weird. Like, uh, so it's like, like who? Like who? Uh, let's see. Um, and I and I'll say, I'm not saying weird in a bad way. A bad way. I just mean <laughs> more. You know, like, like um, more centric. Like their music might be more centric and out there. Like, let's say, um, oh, let's say even like a uh, uh, rap Ferreira or or uh, Billy Woods. You know what I'm saying? Or you know, uh, Quelle. You know. Uh, uh, nigga that took me a minute to get into, so I, yeah, I, 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 that's what I'm saying. And I obviously, as an artist, I like I like them, and I've even yeah. you know done done shit with Billy Woods, and you know I know Rat Ferrari, and it's like, but you know it. I think what it is is like it's just them doing them so much, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And maybe it's not I haven't. Um, got to the me doing me so much where it like rolls over you feel me mm. and because it's like he they got you see what their thing is like if you had to make a meme you know how people make memes and they put like uh a piece of clothing and a piece of equipment and something and yeah. say like this is the such and such pack you yeah. know if they put a pack together when yeah. when somebody can do a this is the K-Town pack. All right, then I, I guess like it's being understood. You know what I mean? See, this is what I think makes hip hop so beautiful because we take somebody like Rap Freer, where Rap Freer raps like fucking like sugar free with a master's degree. Like that's what kind of- Ah, uh, yo, that's, hey, you might have to tell him that. Sugar free with a master degree is kind of a bar. I've never said that specifically to him, but I interviewed him and like we, like we we bonded over our love for sugar free. We both love sugar free. I love sugar free. I already know he loves sugar free, and I never even heard him say that. <laughs> I can so like listen to him. I I could tell that just by listening to him because hey man, hey I'm a you know what I'm saying I know I write a little bit myself, so I be hearing them little. You feel me? Just yeah. All the so yeah, hear, yeah. So when I hear that, I can appreciate somebody like Rap Ferreira. But hip hop is so beautiful because on the other end of the spectrum, I think somebody like NBA YoungBoy is amazing. I think when he gets right. in the bag, I think NBA Young Boy, that nigga, bro, I will listen. He has an album called 3800 Degrees. I'm not lying. This nigga rapping like goddamn a uh, hood Billy Woods, bro. This nigga, rap, nigga, this nigga rapping like Billy yeah. Woods with a murder charge, bro. This nigga, the right, way he's right, going, right. It's so off putting sometimes, but it that I got love. I love that little nigga. That, that, that little no, nigga, you feel me? So, like, no, it's love. funny that. There's a lot of um, artists that are like, um, they rap on a certain type of music, but they're offbeat rappers, but they just got great lines, you know, like uh, like V's, you know, V's. Uh, V's runs with um, Babyface Ray. All of them Detroit. Like, yeah. yeah, like V's rap so weird, but it, he's so entertaining. You know what I'm saying? Like, the way the way he's rhyming, it might be 
offbeat, but the stuff they're saying they're going to do and what they, you know what I'm saying? It's like interesting. And I feel like that's kind of in this, in this era, there's a lot of like, I'm doing what I want with the beat. Yeah. And y'all got to like follow it. It's really more about people are into the cult of the artist. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I feel like everybody has a cult of what they're doing yeah. or what is their thing and their world around them and their artistry. That's what people are into. You know what I'm saying? When the music too, obviously, but you can have dope music and not have that. And I feel like, 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 I hate, I hate when a sneeze goes away. Like, <laughs> I know. That. And, um, and, and, it may just take a while, you know, if you don't have that thing, you know. I'm glad you brought up these because there is like a certain sect of like rap fans that wouldn't be able to appreciate V's for whatever reason. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. It's, it's like the niggas. Honestly, it's like the I would say it's probably like the white nerdy niggas who think like, you know, like, oh, like I can only listen to like a Billy Woods or I can only listen to like rap for it as if right. like, you can't enjoy it. Because I interviewed all niggas. I interviewed V's. I interviewed Ray. Them niggas are hip hop heads, bro. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, he's and Ray, like, them niggas grew up listening to, like, what you would consider, like, the real hip hop. Like, them niggas love hip hop, bro. Yeah. He was on a currency album, the currency Alchemist album. Niggas over at Alchemist beat. You feel me? Like, you can't get yeah. rap it over at Alchemist beat. So, right, right, right. Like, yeah, I, I'm glad you brought that up because I feel like niggas like that do deserve respect because they are good rappers. Them niggas can rap their ass off. Yeah. Nah, it's, uh, it's you know, I, you just realize how we're way more connected than you think. Like, especially when you know when you look back into, you know, you're watching the documentaries on some '90s hip hop and how people used to like. You couldn't see it because there was no internet, but people used to go hang out, you know, and be in each other's cities and be like, and you you hear the stories now through all these interview shows like Vlad and dialogue or all these shorts and it's like they're like yeah i used to you know the person you'll never expect to be hanging out with somebody like red red man like yeah me and dj quick used to smoke blunts all the time why right? come to compton and hang out at the mama's house and you know like you'd be like huh like you know what i mean like because it, it is kind of like um because of the culture it's like a big it's it's kind of like a big dysfunctional family. Like, yo, these are my cousins and that's my stepbrother and, you know, these are my uncles. And it's like, because we're all like listening to stuff, listening yeah. to each other, like kind of like understanding what's going on, perspectives and the whole thing. So, yeah, no, nah, nah, you're right. It's like everybody kind of um, has a thing and you would be surprised what people are listening to. Mm. Like, I would, you know, I'd be surprised. I would be surprised if somebody was listening to me just because of the music that they make. But just because somebody makes some type of music, it don't mean that they got to make your type of music. Yeah. But they might like your music. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how I feel. I'll be mm -hmm. like, oh, I fuck with such and such. I'll, I don't need to work with them and I don't need to make music like them. But I fuck with their music. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's a part of being original is being like, I don't need to be like you, but I fuck with you, you know? See, I thought that's uh, one of the best things about like growing up before uh, like social media was super huge was the fact yep. that regions had their own sounds. You know what I'm saying? Where it was mm -hmm. like New York niggas, they were doing their New York thing. The South had their thing. The West had their thing. And even slang. Like, I'm not going to lie. Maybe I'm on some like just old man type stuff but i do enjoy like when certain slang stays regional and like word it's not just like blended or whatnot like i like the fact you can go to somewhere in oklahoma and you like damn i never heard that before but now it's kind of like everything is just kind of one and it's you know it's, it's losing like i feel like the unique factor because when you listen to music now sometimes you can't tell where niggas from i don't think that was right. a thing in the 2000s and 90s like you could hear DJ Quick and be like, oh, he's clearly from somewhere in California. Or you, can, right. you can hear Nas and be like, oh, he's clearly from somewhere in New York. You know what I'm saying? Now right. it's like, if you're a New York nigga. you like, is this nigga from Atlanta? Like, what's going on? Right. No, nah, word. No, nah, it's funny because you just made me think about like when I was younger, maybe I was like, uh, maybe I was like 14 or 15 or something. And I, my sister had went to Texas. And when she came back, she had a notebook of a bunch of like slang 
and what it meant. That's and she like wrote it all down for me and like brought me like, you know, like gear from over there, like shorts and T-shirts and shit. And I remember like one time I like wore some some shit that she had, uh, gave me to school and some nigga said I look like juvenile. You know what I'm saying? It was like right when juvenile like first kind of came out and yeah. maybe I like ha- I must have had that haircut or something. As like, but it was like I had the shorts on. It was like specifically that uh the uh his first video you know what i'm saying got you. and it was like it was like oh okay because this is like a southern style you know what i'm saying i got a t-shirt brand from a shirt that's from the south you know what i'm saying but i just like the shirt the shirt is hard you know what i'm saying like yeah and it because now it's like now uh vocabulary now people say like okay oh y'all stealing the vocab from over here but really vocabulary is in hip-hop once it goes in there it's a part of hip-hop and it's like i might not use it like but i know what it means now to when i'm somewhere else you know so i don't be saying oh these niggas capping i don't really talk like that but if we in a convo and we having that talk and somebody does talk like that i might you might talk back like that you know you might be like you'd be like Nah, man, these niggas is capping. It's like, nah, it's no cap, bro. It's 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 real. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's funny. And that funny I was gonna ask, what's yeah. the first time I heard that word? Cap? Yeah. No, you know what's crazy? When I was saying thinking about my sister bringing back the shit from Texas, there was a term called uh, high capping, mm. which is basically like you know. You acting too good, or you know, you think you too the shit or something, right? Yeah. And like you better than everybody. So when I first heard cap, I kind of related the two. I kind of was like, man, this must be connected somehow, you know? Because it's kind of like when you cap it, you just kind of like you making up shit and you yeah. you're fronting a little bit, you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of like I, to me, I was like, maybe that was from that and it went somewhere else and then they kind of turned it around i don't even know what region that's from is it from new york is it from the south or i don't know where exactly it's from but i will say when i was in like, elementary school uh like cap was said like niggas would be like well you capped out what up what up capping what up boy cap like like niggas like you capped out so like that what was, where was that at i'm in jacksonville jacksonville florida okay where so florida area so like this was fifth fourth third grade everybody was saying cap i would say when i got to middle school people stopped saying it and then around i don't know was it like 2015 16 or whatever that's when everybody that's when it got brought back up and i was like where did that come from i was like i haven't heard the word right. cap in 10 years so it was it was funny to hear that but like yeah when i when we were kids niggas would say oh you cap nah, you cap it and it's funny so i don't i don't know if it's from florida, wow. but in florida niggas say cap or now i hear people use the word jit a lot which is jit, really yeah yeah, because that's that's something that's predates me. That's something that I've heard in Florida for like listen like trick daddy songs and he called me right like that. So right. it's, it's interesting to see how you know slang can go national. Nah, and how people can um uh, a region can take it and twist it into a version that it becomes theirs. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, like hybrid slang or something, you know? It's crazy. Words are crazy, man. Words are crazy, man. Words are crazy. Your words were crazy on freaking Is This For Real, the song. That's my favorite song on that album. That I love that oh, song. Oh, okay. That the, no. the uh, Is This For Real, same year we lost Nipsey in the fifth. That's fucking fire. The, what you say when y'all, when you say Karen, you think of a racist white bitch. When I think, right. I think of an auntie, I miss. Right. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. You was right your ass off on that. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's kind of on, on that one too is. It's kind of like it's a like a more up tempo like jamming beat like you could probably party to it, but the the things I'm saying is not really party stuff. Yeah, to, you know. I was just about to say if they listen to lyrics, they will definitely sit their ass down and stop partying because that's not a party song. But right. I the beat, and, the beat is very upbeat. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, and that's kind of like that's kind of the idea even too to be like because that's how you kind of like moving through life is it's like. A lot of unbelievable stuff that's bad, you know, Yeah, like that you can't believe. 
but it's like we just kind of we keep moving you know what i'm saying trying to like you know not not be crushed by everything in life you know um and and people would never know people would never know the things that you know you feel about a lot of things that went on in your life they don't they don't know nobody you know what i'm saying especially when you're not talking about it like that you know and i have i, I never i haven't talked about nothing about g on the record and it's like crazy when i like thought about that i'm like damn all that shit happened in that same year you know it's like raj g i have my first daughter um nipsey like right before raj g and it was like yeah, i was kind of like even when it's like was coming to me to the rhymes is like damn that's crazy yo you know what i mean no the nipsey ross g bar kind of made me think of one of my like the more memorable ab soul bars on the uh, book of soul song where he's talking about his uh girl who committed suicide and he says uh she she died in 2012 and he says uh 2012 my world ended and you know 2012 Whoa. was supposed to end right 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 like that shit just, I was like, that's one of my favorite bars because it's, it's such, it got so much meaning to it. So when you yeah. did that, it kind of, it made me think of it. I see the parallels between those bars, but yeah, that was yeah, great song. Great song no, no, thank you, bro. Yeah. Great song. Did you, uh, it wasn't that song, but I was looking at an interview where you said that you wrote one of these songs in your sleep. Oh yeah. Uh, misophonia. That was misophonia um, that you wrote in your sleep? Yeah. Cause it was crazy. It's like, um, so when I was recording, you know, basically I had the studio booked out for a week. I had like a week at the beginning of the month and a week at the end. Um, because, you know, I asked him like, you know, what's the deadline if I'm trying to make this certain date for 2022. And so I was like, okay, cool. So I basically was going every day. I didn't have any songs. I had like beats. I went in the first day, I threw a bunch of beats in that I might wanted to use. And then I would come back and I'll probably do a song like a day, you know what I mean? And so, you know, I had this, I can't remember where it even like started, like the actual like idea of doing a song of it. But I mean, I, my girl has misophonia. So it, okay. the idea I, comes from her and yeah. our, our relationship with it. And but I, the fact of doing it, I can't remember why I wanted to do that. But so then, you know, I'm staying up late and I'm going to the studio uh, early, probably like 11, you know, whatever. And so uh, I, I went to sleep. But it's like when I like woke up, I realized I don't think I was asleep because I like did it really. It was it was a weird wake up. It's not like wake up like how you like. Oh, uh, yeah, I was asleep. Yeah. It was like. It was like I just had my eyes closed or something, mm. and then I remember I, I like got up and I was like, "Yo, oh, I got it." I was like, I went, I went to the NPC. I was like, "Let me check if I got this old beat that I never used, because this, the way I'm hearing this in my head, it will sound perfect on that." So I went in there, I, I found it, I still had it. I was like, "Oh shit!" Started kind of like, you know, doing it over it. I was like, "Yeah." So then when I went to the studio that day, I just threw that in there and then I just recorded it. And it's like, I don't even know how <laughs> I, I never done nothing like that before. Like, I mean, I all, all the stuff I write, I write um, in my in my head, but yeah. I never done it in my sleep before. You know what I'm saying? That was so weird to me. You know, that is crazy. Do you think that you get like a better advantage writing in your head versus writing it on paper or a phone? Yeah, you know, it's crazy. Is that it's like writing it down? Like, okay, if I have a a specific song, it's like, okay, here's the beat. I'm doing it to this specific song. Um, if I start to, if I even try, I try to write it. Just like freezes it on paper, like fucks it up for some reason, you know? Because when I when I Okay, I'm, I usually I'll be listening to the track. I'll listen to it until I know what the beat sounds like, and then I won't listen to it for a while. Then I just live my life, you know, whatever. You know, sometimes if it's like I have to do it that at that moment, okay, we're gonna sit with it in the studio or wherever we're at. But if it's like it's no rush for it, I, I can finish it whenever. 
okay, I'm going to listen to it for a while. I might construct it over a couple of days, driving around, living life, whatever, because I can erase in my head different too than mm -hmm. I can on paper. Because it's like you scratch it, I got to look at it. It's kind of like makes it like permanent as opposed to in my head. It's like I'm editing like, okay, I'm going to take this one word out because it doesn't land right. Okay, I could do this. And and then also when I'm ready to uh, to record it is I already know it, you yeah. know. So then I'm just going over it to make sure it's right. Is this right? OK, cool. Yeah, it is right. And then I could record to it. Now, if I'm if I'm just like, let's say there's nothing to record. It's totally free. I've all the things I need to record is done. I don't have anything I need to do. I'm just naturally just come up with a, a rap because I'm just chilling. Right. Yeah. Now, something like that, I may just write it down. It might be a couple lines it's because it's otherwise it's just in there for no reason. And it's taking up space, you know. So then and so and then it's like, OK, cool. Now, if I if I get a bunch of those and I have them, that it's just like they're they don't they're for nothing. Then I can maybe go when I'm going to go do something, look in there and be like, oh, yeah, I could use these couple lines to start because I, I like this. And yeah. then then now I could do whatever song in my head and I have this little starting point, you know, and sometimes a song would just be a feeling, you know, I just listen to this shit and I already know like, oh, I feel like this, you know, and and it's like they all it's it's really like a like a spiritual thing. I really realize like the ability to do it is it's not me, you know, it's coming from somewhere. Because when I listen back to it, like when it's done, done a recording and I'm going to send it out or like I'm listening to it after somebody sends it back to me and they did whatever they did to it. I'm like, I'm listening to it like it's somebody else. Mm. I'm like, damn, like, that's crazy. Like, I, I'll be every time it ends, I go, damn, am I going to be able to do this again? Like, because it's. I, I don't really know that the next thing's a different thing. And I'll be like, I'm starting from scratch. I don't know what the hell I'm going to say. And I'm so, uh, I'm so critical yeah. of, of, I give myself so many rules and, um, when putting stuff to a recording, like things are okay. There are certain things I'm not going to say. Mm. because I, I have to challenge myself. Do you know, there yeah. are certain things that I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to repeat myself. You know, it has to be a, a new uh, expression every time. So because I do that too, that's another reason why I'll be like, man, these niggas be cheating, man. You know, like sometimes I listen to somebody do a verse or something. I'm like, that nigga cheated. You know what I'm saying? And it's just these because of these own these little laws I got in my head that I give myself guidelines to to keep making me have each verse be different. I want every time somebody hear a verse, they're like, especially when it's, it's features, they're going to say, I got some new information from K-Town. I didn't get in the last thing he gave me, you know, so it, it stays interesting, you know, and it, and it makes sense. You, you love hip hop because... Most niggas are not doing that. Like that no. made me think of uh, Papoose. You ever heard Papoose yeah. alphabetical slaughter? Yeah, yeah. No, first of all, no sane person is making that song. First of all, so like any not at all. That, any nigga doing that, bro. And then some years later, that nigga did like I forget what he called it, but he did like Z to A. Like he did A to Z. Right, right, he, right. I think, I think he said he didn't reuse any words from the first one. I'm like, bro. You love hip hop, so like you so right. hear you say that because you're doing stuff that nobody's gonna catch, but really you. You know what I'm saying with the cheating, right? And that. So yeah. like the fact that you're doing that, you're just doing that for like the love of the game, basically. You know what I'm saying? Which no hey, word. Totally respect, totally respect. Bro. Nah, nah, word. I mean, I mean, that's what makes it more fun, yeah. and not, and also makes it. So I. I'm keeping it fresh for myself because, you know, obviously 
I'm doing it. You know what I mean? Like I could, I could totally like talk about the same shit every single time. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes you got to be like, okay, cool. Uh, on this song, I'm not finna mention weed on this song. You know what I'm saying? Or I'm not finna like, okay, I'm this song. I'm not finna talk about what other people do. Yeah. You know, it might be just those simple things. You know. That's hard, man. That's super duper hard, man. I um, I don't want to keep you for too long, but I do got a question I just thought of because we were talking mm-hmm. about um, people getting interviewed and stuff like that. Is there any mm-hmm. hip hop media that you do consume, like interviewers and stuff of that nature? If so, who who, who do you like sh- like like shows that I watch? Well, no, not like shows, but like interviews, like 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 hip hop media people. So like like you said, like the Vlads or whatever, like, is there anybody that you tune into that you're like, oh, this person's a good interview. I'm watching this person. Like, who, do, who do you uh, watch? Yeah. Um, I mean, I like Talib Kweli's interviews. He I think it, yeah. because he's like, because he's obviously an artist and a lot of times he knows a lot of these people, they feel uh, comfortable. So he's going to get a different um, reaction from the questions and He's asking different kind of things because he's such a obviously a, a student, you know what I'm saying, and a historian of the culture. So it's like those interviews really are good. You know, you get some things you oh, I didn't know that about this person, or you know, and you know, obviously everybody's guilty pleasure is Vlad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like we we all we all hate Vlad, but we love the interviews. You know what I'm saying? Like even when he has an interview and he starts hiring other people to interview, I'm like, man, this ain't Vlad. I want, I want Vlad to, to invade this man's privacy so I can find out, did he shoot this guy? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, but I, I Talib, I'm trying to think, like, who else is there, really? It's like, I kind of, you know, I, I watch really, like, the interviews I want to see. Yeah. You know, from the, okay, this person. Um, but when I think like interview wise, like that's the part Tal- Talib might be the person that I watch where it might not matter who he's who interviewing. Yeah. Yeah. But like mostly like everybody else is kind of like, oh, I want to see this, the artist, what their thing is. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm honestly trying to think like what, who else is there? Can I give somebody a shout out who I think is the best doing it right now, man? Yeah. There's a guy named Beehive. ATL. So mm-hmm. he has kind of like an older southern guy and bro. I envy this nigga because he's so good at this job. Even if I didn't do it, I'll be like, I wish I was this good at anything. Because yeah. he knows how to make people feel comfortable. So, like, yeah. for example, I'm a let me cosplay as Beehive for a second. I'll okay, be all right. Beehive. Okay. So Beehive be like <laughs> exactly like he'll be. So he'll be like, um, so he'd be like, so tell me, man, you got in that car accident, man. Come on now, man. I know that really affected you, man. Tell me about that, man. How was that? And like, he really be making people, it, may, it felt like you talk to an uncle. Like he'll really, right, right. he'd be like, come on now, Korean town. Come on. Now. I know that right. crazy now, man. And people no, like, uh, want to tell him everything. He's so No, crazy. already just you doing the impression you know already you already like kind of like laugh because it's like it makes me think about like you know some relatives on my mom's side in ohio where they're just like they're not really they're not a part of any of the the hollywood none of the stuff they just like hanging out with you drinking a beer and they just talking to you because they just they're actually genuinely in, interested you know exactly and that's how no you- I, I I'm, I'm gonna show him. Yeah. I'm gonna show you some shit. I think he and he interviews like a bunch of hip hop legends. I think he interviewed a wrestler one time. They interviewed this nigga R Truth, and the way he was just talking to us is so funny. He was like, he was like, you in? He was like, you wrestled the Rock, man. Come on, now that's a bad boy, now. How was it to be in the, the ring with the Rock? Come on, tell me truth. <laughs> right. <laughs> and yeah. It just feels so like it feel like you yeah. there with him. So shout out to yeah, him. I love him. No, nah, I'm going a, I'm to a check him for sure. For sure, for sure. Well, hey, man, I don't want to keep you for too long. I did want to say, freaking uh, Little Dominique's Nosebleed, bro, you went crazy on this album with the, like, nigga, it's like a who's who. With, like, from C.S. <laughs> C.S. Armstrong 
Mm -hmm. Suzanne Archives. I just I didn't realize this was her, but like I just started listening to Jametta Rose. She's mm -hmm. nuts. I absolutely love her music. Like, bro, I, yeah. I, I I'm missing a bunch of people, but like, there's a bunch yeah. of people that you collect. Nigga, Anna Y. Speaking of Kendrick, like you had her, like it, yeah, it, Anna Y. Yeah, those features. So shot you. No, nah, I, I even had a I even had my mom and dad on the album too. Exactly. You, yeah. So. From, Everybody, you feel me? Everybody, right. including the parents. Nah, word. Nah, yeah. word. Shout out to that. Um, but yeah, man. If nah, I appreciate anything, it. If there's anything you want to say before we get out of here, man, let it be known. Oh uh, man, yeah, appreciate you having me and reaching out, man. It's um, uh, where do I like find your interviews at? Hey man, we'll talk about. Who cares about my channel? We'll talk about that later, man. But I'll send you my shit, man. But yeah, okay, uh, word. Yeah, you. Tell the people about you, man. They've heard enough. They've seen enough with the Negro in the body, man. They want to hear about Right. Got it. Well, you know, man, I, honestly, I just say you should go listen to Is This For Real, man. It's a, it's a lot of things connected to it, too, visually. Um, more of that coming, but, like, there's things that are already there visually that we're trying to do. It's more of, like, a, a welcome to this fun house type album you know what i'm saying where you it especially with like the skits in between and um even how it rolls out all the way to the end you know so it's kind of like one of the things when, when it ends you got to listen to it again mm. and that's really why it's kind of it had to be like a certain length um time wise so when it ends you go back and you get more pieces out of it because it, the, is this for real is really, it's all of our thing. You know what I mean? It's like, we all go, man, is this for real? Like whenever I see some fucking news story or something crazy, I don't, that's the first thing I say before I just start telling other people that this is really happening. When I saw the brat was pregnant, I said, is this for real? I said, what the hell is going on? You know what I mean? Like, I feel you. Yeah. So it's kind of, that's like the the theme it's like that octave of reaction is this for real it's like what like i can't believe it you know like yeah so i mean that that's that's really all you know like it's really not too much to say we kind of like covered it all you know what i mean there'll be more stuff to come you know what i'm saying hopefully some shit this year um some more video stuff from it different kinds of videos and uh yeah man i appreciate you having me and it's, it's dope that people you know wanted to have me on your show you know well, for sure like i said multiple people requested this and um i'm glad we could finally set it up uh hopefully next next project we could do this again so we could talk no about we will you know we will so, for sure appreciate that uh for everybody watching i appreciate you guys until next time i say what i mean i mean what i say haters gonna hate players gonna play you guys holler at your boy. Peace. Peace.